Sound intensity level, aka decibel level, going to be the topic of this lesson in my new general physics playlist, which when complete will cover a full year of university algebra-based physics. Now in this lesson, we're going to talk about the logarithmic nature of this decibel scale and do some related calculations. My name is Chad, and welcome to Chad's Prep, where my goal is to take the stress out of learning science. Now, if you're new to the channel, we've got comprehensive playlists for general chemistry, organic chemistry, general physics, and high school chemistry. And on chadsprep.com, you'll find premium master courses for the same that include study guides and a ton of practice. You'll also find comprehensive prep courses for the DAT, the MCAT, and the OAT. Well, let's take a quick look at the equation for sound intensity level beta. So that is the sound intensity level, and I wanted to distinguish that from I, which is just the plain old sound intensity. And the sound intensity is measured in watts per meter squared, but the sound intensity level beta is measured in decibels. That's why we sometimes also call it the decibel level. And notice that there's a logarithmic relationship between the two. So I just really quickly want to remind you of what logs do. So because when we're comparing things on a logarithmic scale, things aren't always what they initially might seem if you don't realize it's a logarithmic scale. So if we take the log of 1, the log of 10, the log of 100, the log of 1,000, and go in the other direction, the log of 0 0.1. Now, the thing you want to realize here is I've chosen these numbers specifically because they're all perfect powers of 10. So 0.1 so is the same thing as 10 to the negative 1. 0 is the same thing as 10 to the 0 power. You might recall that anything to the 0 power is 1. So 10 is the same thing as 10 to the 1 power, 100 is the same thing as 10 squared, and 1,000 the same thing as 10 cubed. And when you take the log, you get the power. So the log of 10 to the negative 1 is simply negative 1. The log of 10 to the 0 is simply 0. The log of 10 to the 1 is 1, the log of 10 to the 2 is 2, and the log of 10 to the 3 is 3. And you just get that integer value. Now, if you're not taking a perfect power of 10, you can ballpark it. Like here again, the log of 100 is 2, and the log of 1,000 is 3. So then what can I tell you about the log of 500? Well, 500 is in between 100 and 1,000, so the log of 500 should be in between 2 and 3. But it doesn't come out to an integer value. It's going to be a decimal number. So, And I can ballpark in that in my head, but uh, I'm definitely going to use my calculator to figure out an exact number if I need to. But as long as we've got a perfect power of 10, those you actually can do in your head if you realize what a log is. All right, so now that we kind of understand this, it gives us a little better idea of what's going on here with this sound intensity level and its logarithmic relationship to the sound intensity. Now, we also got to bring up I0 here, which is what we call the threshold of human hearing. And for the average human ear, it's the lowest intensity sound that that average human ear can detect. It's got a value of 1 times 10 to the negative 12 watts per meter squared. And I realize that we're talking averages here, and there's some people with better hearing and worse hearing. But on average, that's the lowest intensity sound the average human ear can detect. All right, so what if you're you know, hearing a sound that actually has that value? Well then, not only would you plug that in for I0 for the equation, but I is the, the intensity of the actual sound we're talking about here, and you'd plug in 1 times 10 to the negative 12 watts per meter squared there as well. Let's see how that would work out. You get 1 times 10 to the negative 12 over 1 times 10 to the negative 12 watts per meter squared, watts per meter squared, and you get a ratio of I over I0 of 1, and the log of 1 is 0, and 10 times 0 is still going to be 0, and so on your scale here, you get a value of zero decibels. And that makes sense. If you're actually hearing a sound that is at the threshold of human hearing, the lowest sound possible here, it makes sense that we should give that a value of zero on this decibel scale. Now the way this works, let's say we make the intensity of the sound we're hearing 10 times higher than that. And so instead of 1 times 10 to the minus 12, it would be 1 times 10 to the negative 11. And now this ratio of I over I naught would not equal 1 anymore. I is 10 times greater, and so I over I0 would equal 10. Well, then I take the log of that ratio, and the log of 10 is 1. And 1 times 10 is going to get me a value of now 10 decibels on the scale. And so in going from 0 decibels to 10 decibels is a 10x jump in the sound intensity. Well, let's say instead of you know 10 times greater, let's make the intensity now 100 times greater than the threshold of human hearing. And we'll go and make this 1 times 10 to the negative 10 watts per meter squared. And now this ratio of I over I0 is now going to equal 100. And when I take the log of 100, we're going to have log of 10 squared. We're getting 2. And I multiply that by 10, and I get 20 decibels. 
And so now the difference from zero to 20 decibels is a factor of 100 times greater intensity of sound. And you can kind of see how this works. Well, if going from zero to 10 is 10 times greater and zero to 20 is 100 times greater, you can infer that from 10 to 20 must also be 10 times greater. And it is because 10 times greater, 10 times greater gets you the 100 times greater. And it turns out anytime you move 10 decibels on this scale, there's a factor of 10 full difference in the intensity. So if I went all the way up to say, you know, way up here to like 70 decibels, and then the question is, well, how much greater, how much louder is the sound intensity at 70 decibels compared to zero decibels? Well, 70 decibels compared to zero decibels is 70 decibels greater. How many sets of 10 greater is that? Well, that's seven sets of 10 greater. And that means we're gonna be 10 to the seventh times louder, seven, 10 to the seventh times greater sound intensity at 70 decibels as compared to zero decibels. Cool, so everything's in sets of 10 on this decibel scale, and it's truth be told, it's because of that 10 we put in the equation right there. Now you don't have to compare everything to zero, let's just say I compared 70 decibels, and we'll put 40 decibels in here. Well, that difference right there is 30 decibels. 30 decibels, that's three sets of 10, and so 70 decibels is gonna be 10 to the third times louder, or a thousand times louder. That's kind of how a logarithmic scale works. So, and this is really important. So again, every 10 decibels is 10 times louder or softer depending on which way you're going. So it turns out I was, uh, I happened to be shopping for a motorcycle helmet for a, a gift for a friend this week, uh, and he wanted a quiet helmet. And so I was comparing some of the best helmets on the market and kind of his genre, uh, and it turns out one of them was at 98 decibels for the loudness detected uh, at the helmet, and one of them was at 95 decibels. And the one at 95 decibels being a little quieter was a little more expensive. Not a lot more, but a little more. But I'm like, ah, it's only 95 decibels and 98 decibels. Is it really worth it? Probably not. I'll just get, you know, the 98 decibel helmet and call it good. Except that I know how the decibel scale works. And I know that the difference between 95 decibels and 98 decibels is not a small difference. It turns out at 98 decibels, you're more than twice as loud, twice the sound intensity as at 95 decibels. It's a big difference, it turns out. And so it turns out to pay a little more for the 95 decibel helmet was definitely the way to go and definitely the way I went as well because I saw, oh, less than half the sound for just a little more money, totally worth it. All right, cool. So now we kind of understand the nature of this and I think we're ready to do some calculations with the decibel scale. All right, so first question here says, normal conversations carried out at approximately 60.0 decibels what is the corresponding sound intensity? And so here you've been given the sound intensity level, but being asked to solve for the sound intensity. And solving for something under a log can kind of be a pain in the butt sometimes, but we'll see how this works out. So beta equals 10 log i over i naught. If we rearrange this a little bit, we're gonna get sound intensity level over 10 equals log of i over I not, and I could go further and solve this for I, but it probably uh, as convenient a point is to plug numbers in as possible. So, and again, our sound intensity level was 60 decibels. We're gonna divide that by 10. That's gonna equal log of I over I not. And so in this case, to get rid of the log, we take the anti-log, which is 10 to the power of, so we'll do it to both sides and 10 to the log cancels, but here 60 divided by 10 is six. So we got 10 to the sixth power on this side. And that's gonna equal I over I naught, the 10 to the log cancels. And so we'll just multiply this by 10 to the sixth by I naught. And so we're gonna end up with 10 to the sixth times I naught equals I. And so we're just multiplying our I naught, one times 10 to the minus 12 by 10 to the sixth. And we're gonna get a value of I of one times 10 to the negative six watts per meter squared. So we've got one last little wrinkle to throw into this and it involves the idea that as you get further away from a source of sound, the intensity of sound that you observe, that you hear, is gonna go down. So, and we all kind of understand that inherently qualitatively, but we wanna also understand it quantitatively here as well. So let's say we've got the, a source of sound in the middle of a room and we like to think of sound is emanating spherically outward in all directions. Now I realize that you or I might face, you know, one direction and try and project our sound in one direction, but if a cricket's chirping or something like that, that sound is just gonna kinda go in all directions universally like so. And 
Uh, and the idea is that the power of that sound is going to be spread out over the surface area of a sphere. And the further you go away and that sound emanates, the larger the surface area of the sphere over which that power is going to be spaced out, so to speak. And the idea is that the intensity of the sound is equal to the power of the source divided by the surface area of the sphere over which it's spread out. Well, the surface area of a sphere, you might recall, is equal to 4 pi r squared. And don't confuse that with the volume, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed, but the surface area of a sphere, 4 pi r squared. And a couple big things we can take away from this. And one is that the intensity is proportional to the power of the source of sound. And that makes sense. You know, you turn up the, the volume on a radio uh, and the sound you observe should go up at a given distance. So, but the other big important one, and the one I wanna highlight here, is that the intensity is inversely proportional, not just simply to the, how far away you are, but how far you away, uh, away you are squared in this case. So if you move to a position that's twice as far away, the intensity you observe is not gonna go down by a factor of two, but down by a factor of two squared, down by a factor of four. And that's the big relationship we wanna see. Now, we could also even go so far as to say like I1 over I2, and come up with a relationship uh, for the two different intensities at two different distances. And ultimately what you're really doing is taking I1 is equal to P over four pi R1 squared, and I2 is equal to P over four pi R2 squared. So, and in this case, the P's are gonna cancel, it's the same power from the same source, the four and the pi are canceling, and it's just the R1 squared and the R2 squared that aren't. And ultimately you're left with one over R1 squared all over one over R2 squared. And when you divide by a fraction, same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. And ultimately this equals, ends up equaling R2 squared over R, uh, let's get that right, R1 squared. And so I1 over I2 is equal to R2 squared over R1 squared. And again, the fact that it's here, it's intensity one over intensity two, but here it's radius two squared over radius one squared. That's demonstrating in that inverse relationship uh, that's involved here. Okay, so, but in principle, if you just understand this, it's proportional to one over R squared or inversely proportional to R squared, uh, that's really the big thing I want you to take home here. So I think we're set for doing this last question from here. And question says, if the intensity level of a siren is 110 decibels at a distance of 5.0 meters from the source. So here we've got something, we're 5.0 meters away and the intensity level is 110 decibels. The question then says, what is the intensity level at a distance of 50.0 meters away? Okay, now I've made the math a little nice here so that it would work out very easily and we can actually kind of reason through some of these relationships instead of doing some hardcore plugging and chugging. But the idea is that in going from five meters away to 50 meters away, we've gotten, uh, we've increased the distance by a factor of 10. And if we've increased the, the distance by a factor of 10, then the intensity is gonna go down not by a factor of 10, but by a factor of 10 squared by a factor of 100. And this is important. So here we started out at 110 decibels, but our intensity goes down by a factor of 100. And that's a nice round power of 10. You might recall that if you go down by a factor of 10, you'd go down 10 decibels. And if you went down by another power of 10, by another factor of 10, you'd go down another 10 decibels. Well, isn't that what it down by a factor of 100 is? It's down by two powers of 10, if you will, down by 10 squared, and it's down by 20 decibels, therefore. And so the intensity level we're gonna observe is going to be 90 decibels. And we've kind of reasoned this out without doing a whole lot of plugging and chugging, but it assumes that you've kind of understood uh, quite a bit, both with the original equation, as well as how the intensity is inversely proportional to the distance of separation squared. Now, if you didn't, how would you go about actually solving this? Well, you'd have your work cut out for you, I'll warn you. And one of the approaches you could take would involve a ton of algebra. Ultimately, what you do is you take your 110 decibels, Go back over here and plug it in for 110 decibels and you'd solve for your intensity. And then you take that intensity and come back over here and use it and the five meter distance of separation to solve for the power. 
And then you'd use that power, because that's constant, that's fixed for whatever the source was, and you'd plug it back into this equation, but now with a distance of 50.0 meters to get the new intensity. And once you had that new intensity, you'd come back over here and plug it back into this equation to get the new intensity level. And it'd be a fair amount of algebra. But again, if you understand some of the relationships here, we reasoned it out, I made the numbers nice so that we wouldn't have to. But in principle, you totally could. If you found this lesson helpful, consider giving it a like and a share. Happy studying.